screen here. It's ready. All right. There we go. And we are live. How's it going, everyone? This is Judy Vergata here. And today we are hanging out with Prosper Teravinga. Prosper is here and he will teach you a four step inbound strategy. Right. Well, he teaches a four step inbound strategy, you know, that attracts, converts and pretty much close your prospective clients. OK. And tonight he's about to drop some major value. So tune in. All right. Prosper, give us a um, give us a little bit of an intro and give us a quick sneak preview what it's like inside your world. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me on your show. First of all, Judith, it's such an honor. Um, yeah, my name is Prosper Taruringa, and I was born in Zimbabwe, where, uh, I don't know if anybody knows where that is. It's one of the poorest countries in the world right now. The economy is so bad. So I decided, you know, I've got a lot to give. I've got so much happening in my life. If I hang around there, then maybe, um, you know, this wouldn't be happening. So I came over to Australia six years ago, 2011 and um, met my wife here and now I've started a business where I actually help small businesses um, you know uh, and online um, you know um, online businesses like yourself to actually grow through digital marketing strategies so I help people to actually curate and create an online footprint so they can optimize their business for growth and profit. Awesome now Prosper break it down for us what exactly is your uh, subject matter expertise? Okay, so a lot of people would just call it digital marketing. Um, I help people to actually start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And by saying that, I help people figure out exactly what their message is, all right? Because if you don't have a message or if you don't know what you're going to be saying to a specific market, your whole um, presence, whether it's online or on social media, is all maybe just playing with yourself. All right. So you got to figure out who are you talking to and what are you saying to them? Because social media just opened up this platform. And if you don't have a concrete message or if you haven't got an audience that's ready and receptive for that message, then all of this is all going to be smoke and mirrors. So there's three M's that I totally base my message on, which is the message, the market and the media of which, um, you know, you, you distribute your messages. And um, eventually the more value you give out through those mediums, the more uh, sort of income you get for yourself um, in, in return. Mm. Message, market and media. Amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So now Prosper, don't hold anything back, you know, really lay it down for us. Tell us about your rock bottom moment. All right. Okay. So obviously being African, that's rock bottom enough, but I'll spare you. <laughs> I'll spare you the, the agony. Um, I'll give you a time when I first came to Australia. I came to Australia six years ago with nothing but a, um, a backpack full of hopes and dreams. I knew nobody. Right. And um, I knew nothing about the tech system. I knew nothing about the credit system. I virtually knew nothing about how the world outside my first world worked. Right. So I came here and uh, the first thing you got to do is look for a job. And um, as you would know, um, the qualifications that I had were not equivalent to the ones that they, um, you know, value here in, in Australia. So I had to really start from the bottom. Um, I was a kitchen hand washing dishes in a kitchen behind. So I'll give you a specific examples. McDonald's um, and you're the one that not even flips the burgers, but you're washing the pots and pans behind the scenes. So I did that for about six months. Um, and um, yeah, I, I was so missing home and you, you know, as, as, as I just traveled with no friend around, I really wanted to connect with people back home. I wrecked up a really big um, phone bill that um, for about four years, they kept uh, chasing me for it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> so that, that was that was just really not a good place to be. So I just started figuring out um, online. There was always a Facebook ad that came up saying, ah, try this method, try this method up until I got an opportunity with the restaurant that I was working um, at, mm -hmm. they had no social media presence at that particular moment, right? So that was a fluke. I cannot say go and be a kitchen hand and then maybe 
restaurant is not using social media, but that was luck um, on my way. And I took advantage of the situation I was in at that particular moment. So um, when I realized they didn't have a social media presence, I offered to help them navigate and page, which you know, would then be used to attract clients. All right. So um, we did that for about six months and then business started booming. And then the owner, he was Italian. He's like, Prospero, come here. Make sure you do it more and more. I'll pay you a little bit more. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm actually getting paid for being on Facebook. That was unheard of back in that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I just started reading and reading and reading um, until I started discovering processes and the process that I actually teach people right now. Um, it, it was all through me trying to really figure it all out, but I've done certain other jobs in between, but it was just at that moment when I came into Australia, when I had nothing and I knew nobody. I mean, obviously some people would say I was homeless, but that, that was serious rock bottom when you only have a hundred dollars and the next paycheck is the next week back that time I was smoking I was drinking and I was just not in the right frame of mind so yeah I I, I took myself off from being a, a nobody to becoming a hero of a lot of people that I'm helping you know start scale and grow their businesses up until today wow wow that's awesome that is just an uh, this is a powerful story. Now, Prosper, what what steps? Like I know you you said that you know you started working on the social media presence of the said restaurant, right? Now, what steps did you take to to improve upon that rock bottom moment? Okay, so I don't know if you can see and look behind me. I mm-hmm. do take absolute respect for personal development because you can't do well if you don't feel well up there you can't yeah. present to anybody else if you're not got happiness within yourself you can't be you know a good business person if you cannot show up every single day all right i'll give you a specific example you just uh, you know requested me to say hey i want you on your show and that was what we all talked about i was like okay here's my calendar and pretty much after that we just rocked up and now we're talking right it's because Mm -hmm. i'm mentally prepared for just about anything or you know what i mean because if you just work um, up until or how you feel like it, you know, we, it, when, whenever you feel like it's the best time to do anything, you never really get ahead. All right. So mm-hmm. if you need to decide where you are and where you really want to be and then just try and fit in the stuff in between. First of all, what I did was I took myself out of all the negativity that was around me. Right. I took out myself out of all the uh, the neat pickers and the people that were not serving me anymore. All right. We all have those people. We all have those people that are dragging us down and they want to bring us down there so they can beat us with experience. All right. So you want to make sure that your environment is so clean that all those things that might bring you down or anybody else that does not fit into your program can be eliminated pronto. All right. So mm-hmm. you, you get rid of TV, you get rid of, um, you know, all following other people on social media that are still doing the same thing, but not growing because it's about growth. The more you don't grow, the, the, the less you, you will be relevant in the next, um, you know, in the next phases. You know what I mean? Because we now live in a 24 hour global environment. All right. So if you are not mentally prepared, if your energy is not there, how are you going to serve for the people you're going to be demanding money from? Hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I like I always tell my students, you know, personal development is always number one. Don't don't be scared to cut the people. Right. Don't be don't be uh, don't be too uh, don't be too conservative with that unfriend button. You know, if they're not serving you anymore. They're just dragging you down let it go it's it's that simple like in you know letting go tv all the garbage right tv fm radio all that good stuff it's hard in the beginning because you know like it's in a way it's an addiction it'll be hard in the beginning but the more you do it it'll it'll, it'll get better (laughs) exactly they they profit on making people feel inadequate Right. So the more people feel inadequate by themselves, the more people feel 
um, not confident with wearing makeup, the more people don't feel confident about their body image, the less they will show their true potential. You know what I mean? Because we, we are now living, like I keep saying, in a 24-hour village where whatever you do matters. Whoever you talk to matters, right? Whatever you know, group or um, forum you're involved in, is your brand so you gotta cultivate all of those things the weeds need to go um those that are not serving you need to go because not everyone is your customer so why are you hanging around with ancient people that are actually not bringing you further towards where your goals are yes yeah absolutely you know it's valuable real estate that that fa- you know the people you surround with that's very valuable real estate even if you don't you notice it or or you don't they re- it really rubs off on you that's why i always say you know you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with now if you are the top performer in that top 5 it's time to upgrade <laughs> yeah so now tell us like uh, what's your uh, most brilliant light bulb moment so far that that aha moment that really turned everything around for you Okay, right. So I would understand a lot of uh, internet entrepreneurs are um, really trying to do a lot of stuff, right? They, they're trying to do everything. They're trying to be on every affiliate program. They're trying to be on every course. They're trying to be in every group. They're trying to be in every email list. Focus mm-hmm. on you. Focus on who you want to be to your customers. And once you figure out who you are, because your life story and your experience have a lot of commercial value than you can ever think of, all right? So whatever you have done in the past and what has worked for you is what you can actually teach other people instead of following what other people's lessons have been. All right. And we all have learned quite a lot. We have been consuming so much, you know, um, information. It's now time to implement. And when you do implement, you find that one thing that you're particularly passionate about. And the only way you can make it really, really your passion is it has to be your story. It has to be your experience and it has to have your name on it. Because if you're going to be, you know, um, you know, marketing the next shiny object every Friday, you're going to have to be learning new things. Why not dedicate that time to actually learning your story so that you can replicate it back to the other people? That's what I did. Mm-hmm. All right. I yeah. figured out I have this one particular story that and my story is a story of hope. And I know a lot of people would would relate to it. No matter how rich you were born, no matter how much of a silver spoon you had, you still needed hope even when you were trying to learn how to ride a bicycle, right? Because you got to learn something. So that's what I figured out. I figured out I needed to find out what was genuinely my thing that I was going to pedal for the rest of my life. And right now I can't say that I'm, 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 I'm doing it, but I'm moving towards that mm. because now my message is to help digital marketers to actually start scale and grow a business that is profitable and enjoyable. Mm. And that's going to be my lifelong mission. And I know there's always going to be a market because people are always going to try and get into this um, digital space and figure out how they can also make money. But in the process, they got to enjoy working in the business. So that's the enjoyable part. And that's what I've now dedicated my whole life to be. I'm not going to learn anybody else's new shiny object. I'm not going to learn anybody else's new shiny course. I'm not going to join anybody else's new group. All right. When I figured out that I am the product, I started creating a brand out of me. Yes. All right. Do you know what I mean? Because there's, there's always going to be another product. There's always another book in the shelf. There's always another app in the phone. Yeah. But who's, who's distributing all of that? So this is what I started to do. I started building an audience, nurturing that audience, 
And now when I've, you know, gotten enough rapport and I've actually, you know, started something that is, um, you know, actually worth following and for people to actually look at, that's when I can start selling to that audience. So if you look at all the people that are selling stuff through affiliates, that's exactly what they did. Why not you? Why not you having your own products being sold on the market? So you just got to figure out what is your life story. Even if you're 22, you do have something that you can teach somebody else. Because as humans, we are always trying to run away from some kind of pain. All right. I've got a two year old daughter and um, every, you can see her little toys are here everywhere. I mean, <laughs> she's always playing yeah. around. But every time I finish work, um, I take her out on a walk outside in our area. The reason why I do that is because I wanted to start learning, um, you know, uh, how to exercise and just bonding with her. Even if I'm working from home, but I still want, you know, to have that dad time without her just seeing my back every time she walks through that door. So there's this one time when uh, she kept falling and then I figured out why she kept falling because she was tripping on her shoelaces. All right. Yeah. While she was tripping on her shoelaces, she would cry. It would be embarrassing for her. And 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 um, you know, it, it's something that she didn't understand. So I taught her how to tie those shoelaces. That took me two yeah. seconds to teach her. But now that's a lifetime lesson for her. All right. Now she's not going to be embarrassed when she falls. Now she's not going to um, be intimidated around whenever she, she feels confident. You know why? Because now I've taught her. I took two seconds out of my daily life to teach her something. Now, can you imagine how much things you can teach other people that you already know that come naturally to you? So figure out those things. Figure out what you're actually really good at because you're here to make a difference in this world. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, you know, the best way to do that is to actually package your knowledge and your expertise so you can help other people succeed. Every single person is always out here to have a happier existence. All right. So you might have something that you already know and that you're really, really good at that you can package into something that other people can benefit off of. It could be you now know how to do Facebook ads. You now know probably how to get customers without the, the you know, the, the trickery or cheating or, you know, all the stuff that is happening on the, on, on, on the internet right now. Figure out what your strong thing is and call it the Judith method. Nice. You know what I mean? Because people are always trying to run away from a pain. So your 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 business as an entrepreneur is to solve those pain figure out what kind of problems are people having and what kind of solution can you provide but you only do that after you build an audience and when you've related to that audience people are more than happy to tell you what they are having problems with you can always find out on quora uh quora.com what people are asking questions about And then just go and be the person that finds a solution to fix those problems and and name it after yourself. Mm -hmm. That way, you've got that pride to actually move it. You've got that pride to um, to actually sell it. The reason why a lot of people are, are, are not making money online is because you're selling an onion that was made by Sally, who you don't even know and you don't care about. Yeah. When you figure out what your thing is and then just go out there and create something that people really want, you, you will, you will make, you will make, uh, you'll be very successful in life. Whoa. Boom. That's an explosive value right there. Like, uh, yeah, no, I was already personally, right. I am getting value out of this myself, like personally, right. Like I was, uh, couple weeks, no, more like a month ago now, you know, I, I'm an affiliate. I still am. Right. But I, I just thought to myself, I have acquired quite a bit of knowledge from, from reading books, from affiliate training and all that stuff. So what's stopping me? So guys, what's stopping you? You know, like it's, it's, it's that imposter syndrome that I find, you know, you think you're, you're not ready. You're not good enough. But when will you be? If not now, when? Right? Just know that you are ready. The time is now. You know, <laughs> yeah amazing yeah definitely yeah so what held you back from going all in when you were uh, first getting started 
Okay. First of all, I thought my skin was nobody was going to want to buy anything from from an African person. That that's just a limiting belief that I've always had and you might people might deny and say, "Oh, it's not that," but it's it is. It is ingrained in us, you know what I mean? And if yeah, you're not absolutely. from that place, if you're not from originally that that place, you might think, "Oh, yeah, people are not going to um, you know, people are not going to buy my stuff or things like that." So there's this there's, there's a lot of limiting beliefs. First of all, I thought I wasn't good enough. Um, what's a kitchen boy going to know about social media? Do you know what I mean? What's what's a what, what what yeah, I hadn't gotten that experience, but I figured out, you know what? If you actually know three lines ahead of anyone else you're already an expert these days if you know if you've just written three lines ahead of anyone if you're reading the same blog but you're three lines ahead you're already an expert so whatever yeah. you have because you're here to make a difference you can always make it in your own twist nobody can ever take that away from you if it's the judith method because what are they yeah. basing it off of People get the imposter syndrome because they're copying other people's stuff. Mm. When you copy, yeah. then you've got something to compare with. Mm. But if you've got nothing to compare against, because look at my hands. Yeah. No hands are off the same. No fingers are ever of the same height. So whatever you might have as an idea, whatever you might have as a theory can never be the same as the next person. So that's where you don't get compared. So that's those were my limiting beliefs. I did not know that I had that much power by just putting my name onto something and owning it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the fastest way to build a unique brand, really, it's just be you. Stop trying saying, you know, I'm going to be the next Ray Higdon. I'm going to be the next Liz Benny. I'm going to be the next uh, Russell Brunson. No, just be Prosper. Be Judith. Be who else is with us here? Be Mar- Margaret. Be Ruby, you know. Stop stop trying to be like, oh, I'm going to be the next Oprah or whoever. No, just you. No one else could take that away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. And, and also, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something. Those guys that came before you, they're not any smarter than you are. You know what I mean? Because right now, yeah. when they were trying to do everything else, I will give you an example of Oprah. Oprah was actually fired from being a mm-hmm. news anchor. How yeah. dumb can anybody ever be to get fired from just reading from a teleprompter? Okay. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, at the end of the yeah. day, all the people that we actually are looking at and people that we praise, um, if something really is meant for you, just really, really go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, they're, they're no better than you are. They just happen to have to be reading one chapter ahead of you. That's all. <laughs> yeah. And so... Prosper, what is the best advice you've ever received? Oh, I think we just talked about it. Just being Just authentic. Be you. Yeah, authentic, but, but yeah. there's always, there's, there will be a caveat to that. Being authentic and being consistent, right? Mm-hmm. People are now tired of what I call one-click wonders, mm. right? You just have one thing and then that's about it. But if you really are doing something that would evolve with you, you are not always presenting the next uh, new shiny object. You just have that one thing. All right. Back to the message that I said before. Once you have figured out what your message is, you want to figure out what your market is. And then the media would vary. All right. When you are consistent with your brand, with your message, people would know you for something. They would need that off of you and nowhere else. Yeah. Just like if you are a Coca-Cola person, it's very difficult for you to drink a Pepsi. If you are, you know, there's always these opposing brands. If you're a Mercedes person, it's very difficult for you to, 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 to go and buy a BMW. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, so there's always those conflicting brands. We know them in our markets. All right. So if your message is consistent, Coca-Cola has been the color black ever since they haven't tried to change it into anything funny. They did, but it failed. If you're yeah. consistent with your brand and people get to know you for something, 
Right now, if you go and buy uh, washing powder or soap detergent at, at the shopping center, you look, you just grab without even looking. You know why? Because you know your mother told you it's the best one. It's got the brightest shine and you don't even question that. Mm-hmm. Now, what if people start just picking your books, your brands, your courses off the shelf without even questioning? You know why? Because you've been doing it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like uh, you'll notice sometimes people stay in your funnel, especially when you're just getting started, right? Some people stay in your funnel for a year, two years. I know a guy who stayed in another person's funnel for nine years. Right. Just because, you know, the timing is just not right. They just want to know how long are you going to stick around? Are you going to be here next year? Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get in here only for six, uh, three weeks down the road or two months down the road. Then you tell me you're no longer doing this. Right. Exactly. Yeah. People are tired of one click wonders. So you want to make sure that if something actually belongs to you, then you would know it grows and evolves with you as the brand. So the best thing Mm -hmm. to actually do is to start formulating you as the brand by building your own audience, um, nurturing that audience and get the audience to give you feedback because you, you can only sell to people that know, like, and trust you. You can mm-hmm. never really yeah. sell to people that haven't known you. So like the person you're talking about who has been in the, in the, in the, in the, in the funnel for about nine years, people take plus or minus six to eight times for mm-hmm. them to actually realize that they want to do business with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Back in the time, you, people used to just see a commercial on TV and then they go and, and, and line up. Now it's no longer like that. People research People look at every nitty gritty. Yeah. It's no longer, you know, speaking one to many. It's now the customer is actually the one who's vetting who they want the service off of. So if you're mm-hmm. consistent and if you're true to your brand, do you know what I mean? People would always go out and wonder, but then they will come back. You know why? Because your values and, and, and your consistency and your stick to itiveness is what actually brings people back for more. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so literally, like you asked me earlier on, what, what would have been the biggest advice? Just make sure your message really is congruent, that you're allowed to change it once in a while, but at least be consistent. Don't be the person who's selling dresses today and tomorrow you, you, you're selling um, shoes and then tomorrow you're selling a Tesla. People get confused. Everyone is too busy with their own problems to worry about what Judith has today or what Judith is offering today. So when you're starting, yes, it's fine to, you know, incorporate everything else, but there comes a time when you really now want to just grow your brand, grow your people. And people, people would actually support a wall that they helped to build. People mm-hmm. want to see your growth story. People want to see and contribute. And, and the more value you're giving to them, the more money you're going to be making off of people because it costs a whole lot more to actually get money. um, I mean, to to get a new customer than it is to maintain the ones you already have. So if you figure out a niche that actually resonates with who you are as a person and your values, stick to it. Different, Mm -hmm. you know, accessories and different successories that you might pick along the way, they're fine as long as they're consistent. If you pick the dog niche, it's okay to sell leashes. Uh, It's okay to sell dog biscuits. It's okay to sell... Um, you know, those dog jackets, as long as the whole thing is the one thing, dogs. Mm -hmm. But if you do from dogs and then you start going to horses and then from horses, you start going to fish, people just be like, you know what? I can't put a leash on my fish. You know what I mean? So (laughs) so you no longer are serving them because humans are creatures of habit. If they have put you in a box of personal development of marketing of whatever niche you, 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 you are representing stick to that. It's easier for you. You are never going to be caught out of brand and you just become yourself. It's an easier long-term, um, you know, um, you know, insurance for yourself because you would, when you're seen walking with a dog, that's your brand. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? So if you just, Yeah, yeah. I mean, we always want the next shiny object, the next best thing. But to be frank, people, people are watching, but mm. they're also too busy doing their lives, living, and they're also growing in the process. 
So if you are not growing with them and knowing what exactly they want at whatever particular time and juncture, then you have no use to them. Because guess what? Sally down the road is, is making sure that all the girls get makeup from her ever since she was 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, like uh, like I said, consistency is king, right? It, it, it tends to just, you can't just keep changing it up because then people will just be like, well, I, I think that is not for me. And, you know, don't get discouraged if you're, you're putting out content, trying to build relationship with your audience, but you're getting crickets, but because in reality, you're not really getting crickets. Cause like prosper said, they are watching. They just happen to be living their lives at the same time, but they want, they're watching you. They see every single thing that you do because like uh, also prosper also said that we are living in this 24 hour village nowadays. <laughs> So, Prosper, what's a one personal habit that's just a must for you on a daily basis? Show up. I've, I've got to show up for the people that I'm creating and relating for. Um, mm-hmm. no, matter, no matter how good I feel, no matter how bad my situation is at home, I yeah. owe it to my audience to show up. Mm. Because who am yeah. I to stop people from receiving this message that we just created today, Judith? Yeah. All right. So every single day I make sure I'm, I'm equipped. I make sure I'm, I'm healthy enough. All right. You can't really put it to the one habit. I read uh, maybe an hour or so a day. We've got 24 hours in your day. So this is what I do. I use what is called the Pomodoro effect, right? Mm-hmm. The Pomodoro method that you divide your day into 30 minute intervals. You will notice that you're wasting a lot of time during the day with that is unaccounted for. All right. So in every 30 minutes, you put 25 minutes to solid, hardcore work that is going to mm-hmm. give you a result. And then you reward yourself with five minutes to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. All right. So 25 yeah. minutes of solid reading a book or creating your funnels or, or, you know, writing your brand messaging or whatever it is that you do every single day to be in front of your customers. And then the five minutes you go on Facebook or you go on Instagram and you scroll for five minutes and then you go back to work again. That's more than enough. Yeah. Because if you yeah. notice, some people are doing it the other way around. They're doing five minutes of solid work and then 25 <laughs> minutes of scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you get you get caught up. So there's an app called 30 over 30, 30 slash 30. Oh, 30 that, yeah. Yes, that gives you that 30 minutes interval. You put it on and then for the 30 minutes, it starts ticking backwards. Or if you don't have the app, you can just use your timer for 30 mm. minutes. And then when it gets to 25, you would have done a lot of work than any guru or any other person out there is actually putting in. You've yeah. got 24 hours and maybe you've got another job, et cetera, et cetera. But if you've only got four hours to do your work, and if you do it the way that I've told you, 25 minutes of solid, hardcore work, no disturbances, no phone, no nothing, no porn, whatever it is that, that entices you um, on the internet, you do 25 minutes of solid work and then five minutes of rest. So in the rest, you can go in, grab a water, grab a snack, or um, fix up a coffee, and then you go back again and you do work. You will notice you get a lot more done in a short mm-hmm. amount of time. Yeah. But a lot yeah. of people think sitting in front of your computer right now um, and, and looking at screens and talking to people is actual work. You are not doing anybody any service if you're not showing up, if you're not creating any content that people can actually find out who you are and if you can actually be the person that can help them in the future. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, that's, no, I... So yeah, I uh, I use the Pomodoro, but I do uh, 40 minutes and 20 minutes, but I find that 20 minutes is a little too long of a break. So I started dropping it down to... 10 minutes <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it, it depends whichever yeah. ratio works perfectly for you depending yeah. on you know what your uh, environment is like and also one other thing that i've noticed about um uh, digital entrepreneurs is they haven't secluded even if you've got a small room that you're renting out they haven't secluded their work space 
All right. Mm-hmm. Because then when you're sitting there, it means business. Because if you're going to have your laptop and you're watching Netflix and you're working and then you've got chat going on, no work is being done there. So you need to actually, you know, designate a corner in your house where you've got a proper desk that signifies work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. No, it's a, it's that environment. When you're here, you close the door. We mean business, right? Like, uh, you know, like you think you're multitasking, you know, watching Netflix, typing, but really multitasking drops down the uh the 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 quality of the product that you're putting out there because actually it doesn't matter what it is as long as you're multitasking you're sacrificing whatever you're actually you're actually doing you're not being productive when you're multitasking great do we have any yeah. people i can't see the people that are live do you have any questions um, from your audience no there's no questions that popped up yet they're just there i see them there's uh few watching but they haven't asked anything usually i'll bring them in when they uh, say hi and they have questions but today they're just listening <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, let's yeah. let's have a few questions from the floor so that it also engages yeah. them because I, I really want to make sure that um yeah. like i say i want to help people start scaling grow a business Absolutely. that's actually profitable and enjoyable so yeah you, usually i bring them in yeah. yeah guys drop us some uh Heart, some likes, some comments, you know, like uh, get the interaction going here. Let's get the engagement going. Yeah, we have a few people watching, but they're just there. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's... usually I'll bring, yeah, usually I'll bring them out, but today they're not. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay no, so we'll move right. on forward. Yeah, we'll yes. wait for them to uh, warm up a bit. <laughs> so Prosper, what's one thing that you're super excited about these days? My girl, my little girl, my daughter. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've seen her. She keeps me on my toes. Uh, yeah. I don't have any recollection of my childhood years. And I am reliving it through watching her grow. So that now gives me a lot more momentum and a lot more zeal to want to show up every single day. You know why? Because... I owe it to her to have an amazing life. So that's what's really exciting. I mean, obviously it might not relate to a lot of people, but yeah. um, the one other thing that's really exciting me these days is the bar to entry into the internet space has become so low that right now we are broadcasting the world over. Back in the mm-hmm. time, this would mean I would have to be in your location or you'd have to be here in mm-hmm. Melbourne And that would mean we'd have to have 500 people that are running around with a camera and somebody who's actually making sure that that broadcast is happening. But no, we're just doing it off of a laptop. And also it's become so cheap to actually instigate and do and reach out to your audience without having to worry about, um, you know, um, you know, paying exorbitant prices. Back in the time when I started, you had to pay Infusionsoft a re- ridiculous amount of money for you to be in touch with your people but right now you can create a messenger bot and you can actually sell your products through that do you know what i mean so i'm really really excited that the internet has become so 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 cheap to start and Mm -hmm. it's it's giving us the best tools that would have costed millions and millions of dollars to actually establish yeah yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, no. So yeah. exactly. There's no excuse anymore, right? You you've always dreamed of becoming an actor or an actress. Well, pick up your phone and start start shooting, right? Start start putting out content. You want to be a talk show host? Awesome. Host a live video, right? That kind of stuff, right? It's the bar has been set so low. So really, what is your excuse? <laughs> right? So uh Come on, guys, get the engagement going. I see you there. You guys are just hanging out. Come on. <laughs> so now, Prosper, before we uh, wrap this up, give us a parting piece of guidance. What's that one message that you believe that everyone absolutely needs to hear? You do not sell to anyone until mm. you've earned it, until mm. you offer them so much value. Mm. Yeah. That's All right? amazing. Because... Yeah, dude. Anything people can Google, but it's the value that we've just done 
that we've mm-hmm. just created right now. You've created a piece of content that somebody would look back at and enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So you have to earn the right to actually sell to somebody these days by having exchanged it with your time, your expertise and whatever experience that you might have to earn that dollar. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Sir. That's what I've uh, always uh, told my students, you know, like, look at it, look at your audience as a, as a bank account, right? You can't withdraw without making deposits and you got to make deposits after deposits after deposits after deposits before you could even think about making a a a, a, a withdrawal which is a, a sale asking for that sale right you got to build that relationship and as prosper said you don't sell until you've earned it <laughs> exactly because yeah. one thing one thing just going back to what we talked about i mean obviously <laughs> there's a lot sorry if, if that's all right but um of course. you do have a life story And you do have that experience. Draw from that because all of that has so much commercial value than you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. All right. We are all out here to actually make a very big difference to the world. All right. So all you got to do is just really package whatever you've learned all, 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 all throughout this time. Okay. In whatever industry you're in and whatever niche or whatever demography that might be in on any topic. All right. And then you want to help other people succeed because we're all here to live. We're all here to learn. And once we've learned, we then contribute. But a lot of other people just just do the leaving part. They don't decide to learn and they don't even want to contribute. And once you start contributing, you get fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The more you give, the more you get back. You've probably been watching this video for the last 30 or 45 minutes. Me and Judith, we've given off of our time. We've frozen this moment. And this video is going to be our time capsule. We gave. Mm. So we're going to get back by people asking questions and trying to figure out how they can also be, do, and have a life that's of existence. You just don't go out and make a withdrawal, like what Judith says, without putting a deposit in first. Mm. Yeah. All right. So work on your expertise, your life story, and everything else that comes along with it and give. The more you give us get. Mm. Right? Yeah. The more you give, the more you actually get back. We gave of our time. We're gonna get a whole lot more from, from just this connection we've had together. Mm-hmm. If I did not do this video, the last 45 minutes never are uh, never gonna be remembered by anyone. Same for you, same for Judith, same for everybody else that's watching here. So the more you give, the more you actually get to keep. Yeah. So we're going to keep this 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. People have a human trait called reciprocity, where if I scratch your back, you want to scratch mine. But the only way people can scratch your back on the internet is through their credit card. Right. All right. Yeah. So use that to your advantage. Mm. Do good for people so that they really want to pay you back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's tough to explain, you know, like I, I, I honestly believe in the law of attraction, which is why I have, have attraction marketing like straight up all over my business. But it's tough to explain, but it just works just like a prosperous bed said, you know, you scratch their back, they scratch yours. It's just the way it is. It's human nature, right? It's it's tough to explain the science behind it. But the more you give, the more you'll get. The universe just has a weird way of taking care of those who give. <laughs> I understand, but also just while you're waiting for, or maybe your people to come through, most of the books that are in my shelf here are Mm -hmm. gifts and presents from my audience. I don't know if you noticed what I did uh, for my birthday. I gave people a wish list and I asked people to, um, you know, give me a couple of books. This is quite expensive to, to, to maintain, but if, if you give people value, and you just ask off something in return, they're more than happy to, to, to um, reciprocate that in whichever way. That's just human nature. People really like nice people. So just be mm. a, a good human. Just, yeah. just be a good human. And the best test is 
Would you ever lie to your kids? Would you ever lie to your grandma? Because if you can't do that, then I don't think you want to lie to the next person you are trying to get money off of. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Rebecca, how's it going, Rebecca? She's uh, she's a regular. She always comes in to uh, watch uh, my videos here. So what book has been most transformational for you? What book has been the most transformational for me? Okay. Um, I, I read a lot, but if you have heard of the book, how to Adele Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Mm-hmm. All right. Because we are living in a world where we're expecting other human beings to pay for our lifestyles. All right. I don't know if people have actually understood that fact that even if your hopes and dreams are a really good house, a very functional business or a, a, a nomad lifestyle where you're living on the beach, et cetera, et cetera. It's people that are going to be funding that lifestyle. So if you don't know how to deal with people and you treat them like a hashtag or you treat them like a follower, that lifestyle is never going to happen. All right. What's, what's the, what's the lady's name? Judith? Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah. Rebecca. That's a really, really good question. All right. So how you can influence people and how you do anything is, is just about how you do everything. So if you're really nice to people and if you're really giving off of your time, you will be more than, um, you know, you will be more than in a position to actually influence them. In, in the future to actually reciprocate with their credit card, therefore funding your lifestyle. So you got to treat people so good because they're the ones that are going to afford you that lifestyle that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you got to be good to people and understand that, you know, like the way I see it is, uh, you know, I will be giving them two minutes of my time and that two minutes, they'll take with them forever. Judith was, what was Judith to you during that two minutes? Was she, was she an asshole? Was she nice? Was she helpful? Right? They'll take that with you forever. And and in today's case, right, we gave you what we were what the forty five minute mark now, I think, but maybe more. But anyway, yeah, you will take this forty five minutes that we shared with you here, hanging out with you guys here forever you this is how you'll remember us and it's the same for you guys when you're when you're out there you're helping people you're 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 connecting with your audience that small amount of time that you give them they'll take with them exactly right? because it takes 10,000 hours to be perfect at anything and we are all praised for the amount of work that we put in behind the scenes it only takes 10 seconds for somebody to swipe right it only takes 10 seconds for somebody to actually click like on your ad or get into your, you know, your, your mail list. All right. Mm. So whatever you're doing, you got to make sure that you are putting in your best foot forward. It only yeah. takes 10 seconds. Even if you're a good person behind the scenes, even if you're a good person all over, that person only sees that 10 seconds. So the way you treat people, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. Yep. That's powerful. That's powerful. This has been a very, very explosive episode. Guys, if you're, uh, if you missed the beginning and uh, you're going to catch the replay, or if you're watching the replay, please leave us the hearts, the likes, the shares, the comments, prosper. And I will see it. I have prosper tagged up. You know, um, leave it and uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to we're, we're going to interact with it, even if you're watching the replay. All right, Prosper, get, before we wrap this up, what is the best way that they could connect with you? Oh, OK. So the best way to connect with me, um, I've, I've been working quite a lot on the digital space. So just looking up Prosper Taruvinga. And if you're on Google, be sure to pack a lunch because you'll be there for a while. But um, <laughs> there's quite a lot to see there. But I've got my website, www.livelongdigital.com.au, www.livelongdigital.com.au. Or just connect with me on Facebook. I, um, I have what they call a private profile, which I've opened up to be a platform for those that really want to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, definitely check that up. That's 
That's uh, livelongdigital.com.au. I also left that in the comments here, so definitely check that out. And if you have any questions, you know, message Prosper or message myself or leave it in the comments. That way everyone else benefits from your question. All right, guys. So if you do not want to miss out on the next training video that I will uh, be uh, that I will be sharing and uh, the next episode of Entrepreneur in the Spotlight, there should be three dots, depending on where you're watching from. Three dots, hit that and turn on uh, turn on live notifications. And then, uh, yeah, if you, again, like I said, whether you're watching with us live or wa- watching the replay, leave the comments, the hearts, the likes, the shares. We will see it and we will interact with it and we will respond to all your questions. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with us. I love you guys. I appreciate you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks again, Prosper. Thank you.